Welcome to the Success Journey Show. Let's travel together through the lives of individuals on the road to success. All right, travelers. All right, we are back. We are back with our favorite segment. And um, we have a guest with us. And man, you guys are looking at the screen like, man, we've seen this guest before. We've definitely seen this guest before. He's a little gray, more, a little bit more grayer in the beard. I don't want to say anything when we were in the green room, but he, if you go back to episode uh, 92, you'll see our brother, Jeremy. We were talking about uh, lifestyle legacy. Uh, and he came back on with us today just to chop it up, talk about where we've been over the last, where he's been mainly over the last couple of years. Um, and then it's, let me pause real quick, right? So it's crazy, guys. When I say we're an episode like 170, 180 now, right? And Jeremy was on with us in episode 92. Now, some people would be like, oh, man, it's maybe like, you know, what is that? Rough math, 80, 80 episodes, you know, away or something like that. Yeah. But that's over two years, that's like two years ago, man. Yeah, he's been on long. here with us, man. Time, yeah, time has flown fast, man. So definitely, definitely glad to that to to come on i am another uh point of transparency we've been on here just talking for the past 30 minutes trying to do a podcast but we just catching up on everything so man it's definitely a pleasure man definitely let, let's capture some of this uh growth that we and and you have done over the last couple of years man we're really excited to jump into it so jeremy thank you so much for joining us again how you doing today man I'm doing great. I'm so uh, privileged and pleased. You know, I had, to, I had since we're all confessing, I had to call Marlon and say, hey, um, you know, what's up, man? I, you know, I got to get back on there. You know, y'all are doing some some great stuff and I want to I want to stay in the mix. And, and I think that um, I didn't really know. The real impact that you guys have and. Um, one of the main reasons why I circled back, you know, a total stranger. You know, I'm in California, um, in San Diego, San Diego, doing some work and stuff. And a lady, in fact, uh, he's an Uber driver. Mm. You know, driver taking me to the airport, and we're just talking. And long story short, she's sharing some of her stuff, and I'm like, "Oh, you know, well, you know, you could do so and so and so and so." And she's like, "Didn't I see you on TV or something?" And I'm like, "Well, I haven't been on TV lately." She's like, "No, no, online." And she's like, yeah, 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 you're the guy that blah, 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 blah. She just started, you know, talking about the show. And I'm just like, wow, these people. And then just right after that, another party, you know, happened to have, you know, I, I'm, I'm going to say stumble onto um, the conversation that we had last time. And I just, I said, man, you know, if I can do something to help total strangers by sharing my experience and um, my aspirations or, you know, any of that, then, then you guys are really having a great impact. And, you know, you know hats off to you all. For doing it, keep doing it, and um, you know, thank you for doing for doing this, sharing information with others, our community, you know, people we know in near and far. Hey, Jeremy, yeah, thank you, thank you for coming back on. You know, what's funny is when you shared that story with with, with, with me the last time, um, or when we spoke, when we um, it's funny we don't sometimes even know our own impact because yeah, yeah. I'd go somewhere or well, I'd be somewhere and. A lot of times your numbers, because you don't have 50,000 followers and all this different stuff, you, 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 a lot of people equate their followers with what's really going on in the real world. With so impact. with the impact. So what, what, when I see somebody and they're like, oh, the, you're success. Or they say something, I'm like, oh, snap. Okay. You know what I'm saying? So um, it, it, it's great to bring somebody on and the information that you had was something that that person needed. You know what I'm saying? And that's why we bring the guests on selfishly for ourselves to hear about your story and hear about some things and kind of take your information and apply it to our lives, but also to bring it to the vast majority of society and just try to be impactful and be a positive change to what's going on out here. You know what I'm saying? Absolutely. And I, and I, I really enjoy the name because um, everyone that's out in the, let's say, achievement world, um, you know, accomplishing their goals, no matter what industry or business category or, you know, trade they're in. Um, they've had a journey, you know, yeah. and uh, Rick, you know, when, we, when I jumped on, 
You know, we're talking yeah. about the experiences that yeah. you go through, the levels that you go through, and you know, for your whatever you're trying to accomplish. And sometimes it may feel like you're on cloud 20. And then sometimes mm-hmm. you feel like, man, am I doing anything? Am I making this happen? And so, <laughs> you know, it's it's a great, it's a great title um, because of the impact, because of what it means for all the people, whether you've whether you've hit you know multi-millions and billions, or whether whether you've just you started and you know, five or ten months ago or 12 months ago, you had an idea, and then you know. Um, 12 months later, that idea is now manifesting into something tangible and you can start to, you know, support that particular demographic. So, you know, I've watched your videos where you're celebrating your, um, your, your product, your invention. So I'm going to, I'm going to salute you as well saying congratulations on, you know, taking an an idea and then bringing it through and knowing that there's an audience for it and, and that now it's, it's tangible and you can then, your product can then go and help, you know, some group of people in, in different parts of our world, right? So I'm very, 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 very proud and, and thankful to uh, be a part of your conversation. And today, what I really want to um, talk about is that. I want to talk about, you know, people understanding how to protect um, their intellectual property, protect their, who they are, their ideas, and in what, and what, and what, what value it has. Because I think a lot of people don't really understand even their own value. And, mm-hmm. and many people don't understand what, 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 IP is or what the, you know, what the value of, you know, your, your own ideas are. Right. So. Love it, dude. Yeah, bro. That, that I'm I'm glad you're on that because I think just naturally based off of where we are and what we're doing, like all of our conversations have been kind of centered around that. And Marlon and I, we never really went in depth as to the overall process that we went into. And we were thinking about like, hey, how do we like start sharing it? So when you're coming on, you're talking about protecting an idea, right? And everyone has the, it could be, it could be actual uh, physical product. It could be intellect and it could be all these different things. So man, I'm excited to really jump into that with you as we kind of walk through the steps. And so why don't you share what our travelers, like even fr- from, from that infancy stage of, something comes into their mind, which it happens to everybody, right? We, everyone in this world has an idea, right? But not everyone executes on the idea, knows how to, or knows how to protect themselves along the way. Why don't you go, go ahead with that? Man. Well, well, we live in the age of, um, of YouTube University, right? Yes, sir. And, um, yes, and sir. Instagram, Instagram pros. So I'm not, you know, I hope that uh, today, some of the some of the fact point facts that um, we dropped today, we, we were making jokes earlier about you know about <laughs> slang facts, right? So I hope that some of the, some of the facts that I, that I share, you know, will will be taken taken into the right context. Um, well, there's different levels of protection, right? So w- when 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 someone decides that they have a side hustle, they start um, putting food in a container, putting their name on it, and selling it and delivering it to people. Right. But they made up their own thing. Let's just something I'm using food as a real easy example. Like anyone ever heard of Rasta pasta, which is, you know, the yes. mm-hmm. world of, of vegetarians and vegans and whatever, you know, yeah. the person who came up with Rasta pasta could have protected it. Right. Um, mm-hmm. But when you look around you, every single thing you see or touch or experience is intellectual property. Everything from the computers, the screens, the program we're using to record the paper, the pen, the business card, the fork. The, the list goes on. Um, the world is is filled with creators, and so mm-hmm. you know the government, um, the world government. But you know, since we're here in in, in the states, right? The government created, um, categorized, you know, um, specific type of genres of elements that you can protect, right? So you protect your assets in general with like company, a corporation or an entity of some kind, LLCs or S corp or C corp or something like that. Um, you may want to hide your entities from certain certain groups by creating a trust and then it protects those things or you may want to uh protect your ideas your written words or your recordings um by just documenting that you own this by filing a copyright right and so copyright more than people know is so broad copyright mm-hmm. is so broad and it can be used in, in multiple mediums so, yeah. so, so the copyright. Then, if you have a name like Success Journey Show, 
right? The success ratio is a trademark. That's your mark. That's how that's how you guys are going to be identified separately from the next um, you know podcast show or or, or, yep. or or something similar. So trademark. Then when you come up with ideas that has some kind of function um, or some kind of solution that that is a process, whether it's a design that is functional or it's a a product that actually causes some kind of function is patents, right? And so a patent also allows people to protect um, those those kind of things. You can have a patent on on, on shoelaces, right? You can, you know, I, I love Shark Tank because you see all kinds of um, um, people coming with their ideas and stuff like that. So 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 these are the different type of containers, the different type of elements that you use to protect um, hmm. your ideas or your creations. Um, you know, on a, on a, on a day to day basis, whether, whether it's from the beginning or once you've brought it to market and you're going to go ahead and, and, and share and sell it with the public. And so I would mm-hmm. love, you know, if, if you, all, you all have um, questions or scenarios that, that you've um, heard of or scenarios that you believe that people have had challenges with that we could talk about any of those scenarios. You know, yeah. we could talk about even with, you, you know, you have a product and maybe what, what the idea for your product had been. And then, and then you know, mm-hmm. what made you decide, man, I, I have to go through my process to learn how to protect it. You know, yeah. I would love to be able to answer some of those some of those questions today. Uh, oh, yeah, sure. Go ahead, Mark. Um, OK, so we have a patent on our on, on, on our product. Somebody else makes a product that's just like ours. What's the ramifications for that person and what kind of legal action can you take? Towards that he's person. going deep. He went. He went straight to the. <laughs> Yo, here's here's the um here's the important thing to remember. So whether it's a uh, it's your company, right? Yeah. Now the good, the good news is in in states in America they won't let you um file a company in a particular state that that is already a name that's very close to it or the exact correct. But correct. but mm-hmm. but another state might allow yes. you to file yeah. a company name. I'll tell you at, a story about that. Right. <laughs> So another state might. So so that's the first level of, of of how do you do that? So like you know my company, the lifestyle agency, right? When you Google it, so when I first came up with this idea of of lifestyle agency, it wasn't like oh a company name I came up with. I it was actually a um I, idea of an agency that really communicates through about lifestyle, education, whole housing, you know funding, um, fund travel, et cetera, et cetera. And I'm like, oh, wow, I'm a lifestyle marketer. I try, I market about these areas in the lifestyle agency. So I did, I wanted to register. So I, when we Googled and did a search, I saw there's a whole bunch of people using that phrase, but nobody mm. protected it. Nobody so I like, oh. and, I, and I filed, you know, well, I didn't do it. I, I learned the process of filing a, what a trademark filing is, right? And so then once you've gotten it, now you need to then enforce or protect the mark that you've registered. All right. One, it takes money to protect stuff. Yes. Right. That's the, it takes money to protect stuff. Life. So, so you know, there's some things that you can't do nothing about unless it has some real value or you have the money to go and compete and fight the people that have it. Right. Mm-hmm. So if you're saying, hey, you've got a patent and someone is what they call infringing on your patent. Mm-hmm. Right. There's a couple of ways that you can go about it. One, let them do it. Not too long, but let them do it and see how far it gets. Because maybe they have more money than you and you're, and you're just getting started. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Right? So so put a pause there and think about like a recording artist, right? Yeah. A recording artist, a national recording artist. Here's a track. Mm, got a couple of lines of words and they're writing their own song and they took some words from somebody else's stuff. This is more common. I figure people can, can relate to this. And let's, let's say, you know, B, right? I don't get in trouble. But, you know, B, you know, has a situation where I don't know if it, that was a recent story where you know a song was written by somebody else and B used yep. it, and then you know they they started running their mouths about stuff, but the they took, yeah, it was crazy because they could have made bread off of it or got more exposure, but they told her to t- and she took it right off her album. Right. So the idea is so let's say that the per- let's say that they they realize what the power of that is. So somebody bigger has your stuff. Maybe they didn't really intentionally take it or not. Whatever that is, that's a different discussion. But the, the opportunities, what I think you want to know is that person has more power, fiscal power or reach power or awareness power than you. So they're going to go ahead and reach more with it. So then now you can mm-hmm. come and try to enforce by way of the courts that this person has infringed and you doc, you bring your documents. So you don't need to have money to stop them. 
You just need to be able to have proof that you registered your idea. And you can file mm-hmm. a complaint. And now that person has to respond to that complaint and justify it, you know, prove otherwise. And if, if they can't prove otherwise, because you actually have proof that this material is yours, then you are now, um, you know, able to, to be compensated for your creative work, your investment, your original idea. While they mm. already reached very far. So now people are like, hmm, that's a good product. And now you're like, I have it. <laughs> right? right. So I thought you I thought you were gonna say the first thing you could do is pay them a visit. Well, th- that's what I said. The, the, the most important part to look at, right, is is where are you? Oh, yeah. Uh, yeah. Where are you? Where are you in the scope? Because because the one who wins in court is the one that got the bigger pocketbook most of the time. Yes, correct. Yes, correct. Right. So 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 that's what I'm. That's what I want to get at now, and and that's why I'm trying to see if this patent thing, if some of it's a sham or is it very credible, because I have a patent on my. I have a patent on X. Right, company Y is a bigger company than I. And they, they string me out on litigations in court that now I'm going a year and a half to try to battle out this patent situation. I don't have that money. Yeah. So now- well, What it, I would it, say to you is hang on. Say it again? What I would say is hang on. So if you knew, if, if you actually did, you know, protect the, the particular item that you're discussing, um, before them or you know you do you know and you have the council that can really say look no this you this is yours look you registered it on this date and theirs was after you know blah 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 now patent's a little funny because there's this little piece um where someone could innovate meaning like they could add to what you've done to improve upon what you have and the government the, the patent um office may office. give them yeah. you know right. something on that. So, so there's opportunities. Now, here's the, here's the other part of that same thing, that same coin. You duking it out with them, boom, 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 man. No, I got it first, just that and the other. Another another way to look at it is, hold on. And Marlon, you said it earlier, a few minutes ago, when I brought up the, the, the music piece of it, you yeah. said that the person, the female in that story, if she had just said, you know what? Hey, listen, B, you know, um, come on, you, you know where I'm at. Here's my papers. And if that per- other party is rational, because sometimes people have more to lose and, and you're a, f- a small fry, and the small fry could really mar their their reputation or their their their, their integrity or their cash flow. The other way to do it, rather than slinging back and forth, is strategically negotiating, right? A license agreement. Yeah. And so, mm-hmm. so that's another path. Let me give you an example. So, you know, right here in my office, um, about it's sometime in December. You know, I was talking with the stockbroker. And um, we're over here having drinks and I, I'm looking for some capital and we're talking deals and this and the other. And he's like, oh, wait, you're, aren't you an IP guy? He's like, yeah, yeah, yeah. And he says, um, I, got, I got a deal for you. I, I, can, I can help you get some, get, some, get some money on the deals you're working on. But um, I got this situation. And the situation is that um, some company invented a particular product. Um, it's an international company. And they kind of went awry or went aground with it. It will just the tank, yeah. their business tanked. However, the technology that they invented works and it's protected. Another company that's a billion dollar company, um, which one of the founders of the company number, the one that actually went tanked yeah, was a founder, part of, yeah. um, had this idea and they said, well, they were trying to get them to um, buy this product and merge. Yeah, yeah. And so this, this, this is like a, you know, a $7 billion thing. And so the company that had the billion dollar success, even though they were using the technology of the other company, they, they yeah. didn't want to, partner with them like or or merge with them because they're like that guy has no integrity we don't want him but he says we want your tech and so they were able to have conversations now this conversation is still happening so i haven't gotten my piece of that billion dollar transaction yet <laughs> the idea is that now instead of instead of them saying no dead deal no good we come back with a licensing proposal like fine you don't want to partner with this guy you don't want to do business with this guy but this is, this is in, in the med- medical technology space guys <clears throat> so they were able to then take that idea and say, okay, let's figure out, let's let's license it. Meaning that person is going to say, okay, you're going to give me permission to use your product, right, over X many years, and I'm going to pay you a percentage of, of the revenue from it, or I'm going to pay you an X amount of fees for that. And so that guy could take that money and go build something else. Correct. Yeah. Correct. Correct. So in, in your scenario, that's an opportunity that, that you have. 
Yeah, man. So when you when we're talking about all this, I want to make sure all the listeners are. Marlon kind of jumped all the way to the to the finish line with everything being done <laughs> and I'm protecting it. I, I want to actually step in through uh, a little bit of what that process looks like. And so, someone has an idea, like you said, you can go online and look up how to do these things. Now, I, I want to educate people just because I know we went through this process of. There is individual research, right? You going online, figuring things out, finding websites, going to the U.S. Uh, patent office, uh, filing everything yourself. There is a attorney um, uh, route where finding a patent attorney and letting them file everything for you. Um, there's also consultants that also can take your information file it for you. You have people like uh, Legal Zoom and uh, Jeremy, I think you do a little bit of something in this space too, is helping people, consulting, pe consulting with people. Um, talk about those different roads and routes to take because they're all valid and you can all get, you can get to the same point going each way. And I want people to realize this because when you go and search Google, you're going to see a lot of ads of saying, hey, we'll do it for you. Or you find the links and you can do it, your process it yourself. We went through a route. We, I think we touched all three of them at some point, right? Through our process. We went to where we talked to some consultants that gave us templates to do a process of our own to do provisional patent. Uh, then for the utility patent, we went to an actual patent attorney and had him do all that, that, you know, kind of make it, you know, put a bit more meat behind our patent, things of that nature. They're all valid ways, and it all depends on what way you want to take. So, but talk about that a little bit, uh, well, if you can, with the you know, traveler. So we're on patents, so I'll start there. Usually, we, we don't usually start our patents because it's a, it's probably the most complicated. And let me make a point: this is just um, for informational purposes, right? I am not a um, licensed patent attorney. I am not in that space. <laughs> However. We don't yeah, these, hey, only, and and anything that Jeremy says is not a part of the success journey. <laughs> Doesn't reflect our views. Let's start with that disclaimer, all right? But um, what's important for people to know, like some top line points, patents is probably the most complicated space because it really is about science. Um, there are very specific rules that the USPTO puts out about, you know. The patent application process. One, if you take a product and you create a product and you actually bring it to market before applying for your provisional patent, no deal, right? It's an easy, easy example there. So you know, people like to put stuff on on social media right away to tell the whole world. You start coming up with your ideas. Um, you don't just start bringing it to market and selling it to people. Now there are ways to to to, to figure that out. If you have done that, we can look at it. And, and an expert um, can really look at that and, and maybe save you, depending on the circumstance. But that's the first step, first thing to know. Yes, a provisional patent allows you um, to bring and test market, but at least you've already registered it with the patent office to let them know that your intention is to bring this to market and you want to document that journey, right? And so after your provis provisional time period that they allow you, you would know because it's going to be a very hefty investment to get the actual patent, whether it's a utility patent or a design patent or what have you then mm -hmm. you would have to work through the process with an expert to accomplish that goal. Most yeah. people really don't, we, they take it for granted that, um, you know, these things, someone came into my office and said, oh, well, I, I did a patent. I did my patent search already. I did my patent search. And I'm like, because you are a patent attorney, expert, you're trained. Or, like there are attorneys <laughs> and then there's a patent attorney, right? Mm -hmm. And literally mm -hmm. that person that's a patent expert had to take what they call a patent bar. So people, mm -hmm. people study, and take a bar to be a lawyer, but that's not the same thing. Then you gotta go take a patent bar if you choose to be in that space um, as an mm -hmm. expert. So it's a really specified area, right? When it comes to patents. So hopefully I kind of kind of top line it. Yep. Everybody tries to use, you know, like I said, YouTube University or Google, and you know, in anything you're doing, no matter what business, what trade, you want to find an expert to do the thing. Um, to, 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 to help you accomplish the goal that you're trying to do, right? At a minimum, mm -hmm. do the re to do the research and get your preliminary questions answered. I would not tell somebody, yeah, go to go to such and such, you know, whatever.com. Um, I try not to say those, those people's names because even right now, the USPTO 
um, is going through and, and, and rooting out um, entities that are operating inappropriately. And it's just based on price. So for example, most people that are just trying yeah. to do a trademark, they go to such and such.com um, to file a trademark, right? Mm -hmm. What most people don't realize is they're just preparing the application for you. Exactly. Yes. Right. So you yes. pay, oh, it's, it's, it's $200, right? So here's, here's what I always say to somebody that comes to speak to me about price when it comes to these kind of things. And I'll say, well, that's true. Their price is better. But let me ask you a question. Do you think that this particular thing that you're trying to protect can help make you hundreds of thousands of dollars or millions of dollars or billions of dollars in the near future? Yes, because it's the best idea ever. Absolutely. Great. And do you think that a $200 investment is a good foundation for accomplishing that goal? Mm, oh, man. But that's all I have right now. Always find an expert. <laughs> 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 Always find an expert. I'd rather you go to the expert and say, hey, you know, all I have is 200, but here's what I have in mind and see what they can do to help you. And, you know, some yeah. reason, for some reason, people are afraid to be transparent and honest. Yeah, like they, they, make, they make it feel like you got to have everything together. Like, they, they, like their experts are not expecting you to have anything. And, and I'm glad you just said that because I wanted the first thing I had to learn where I'm calling the U.S., um, patent office. And I'm like, yo, listen, I never done this before. I'm on page X. What do I fill out? Like, how do I sign this? Hey, I'm going to do it. I'm going to submit it. I'll call you back next week to make sure it was done right. If it ain't done right. Let me know. I'll, I'll do it again. Like I failed that application three times in submitting it because I didn't know. But every time I kept all above, I said, Hey, you guys marked a different part on here. You didn't do last time, man. No, tell me. I don't know. I don't know what I'm doing. Like, tell me. And the guy was like, "Oh man, don't worry about it, man. Just, just do this, do that, do this and that. You'll be, you'll be good to go." But when it when it came to the fact of me realizing, like, I do not know and being open to say, I don't like know. talking to the lawyer, like, dude, this is what we did. I don't know if it's right. This is your realm. You do take it and run with it. Like, I don't, I don't got to know, and I ain't gonna tell you whether you're right or wrong. I trust. You came with a high recommendation, me and you connected. I trust you know what you're doing. I don't know what I'm doing. Boom, and go on there. Now, don't get me wrong, guys. Don't get me wrong. I do know some things. Like, so I'm not being, I'm not going to be bamboozled. You did your homework right? yeah. enough. Yeah. Do my homework, right? <laughs> I'm not just turning over and letting someone take it. I do my homework to make sure, and I'm cross uh, referencing the language in which they're speaking and things they're talking about to make sure it makes sense. But I don't have to be an expert at it. And they're not expecting me to be an expert at it. No. So I love that point. And, and here's the thing. That's not what you're trying to be. You're not trying to be an expert in <laughs> your property, <laughs> trademark filing or copyright filing, yeah. right? Um, yeah. You're trying to be an expert in the industry or the trade that you're working in. So whether you're a songwriter, producer, fashion designer, you know, inventor of, of you know, technical product, mechanical product, you know, sports product, whatever the, your, your area is, you trying to be the expert in that. So since you want to yeah. be respected in the area that you are the expert in, give yeah. the respect to the people the person, who've invested yeah. their time, their knowledge, their trade, their money in a particular yep. area to be an expert and allow them to do what they do. And then just like how you want somebody to earn money and pay you for your product, then you should respect that person or that company and then earn money and pay them for their expertise and trust that they're going to assist you, you know, with 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 getting the the, the project, the trademark or the copyright or the patent that you're trying to accomplish. Whatever, yeah. no, but but you know? but let's look on the other side of it. Now I'm on the customer side. You guys are on the side of the experts. I'm gonna, I'm going to play the the other side of the coin. It's just like with anything. You could talk real estate. You could talk with life insurance. You could talk with patents. You could talk with all the different things. These ex. Some people mess it up for the good experts. Yes. You understand what I'm saying? Because you have those guys that are like, I can make a million dollars tomorrow. Or, yeah, man, just give me the, just like you said, give me $200 and I'll file it for you, right? Knowing that you only prepared the doc, the, the document. Yeah, they didn't file. Did you, 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 did you gave somebody 200 <laughs> to say, what's your name? What's your address? <laughs> <laughs> that stuff. And, and, and then when you talk to that person and that person says, well, you need to give me 
X much money, money to do X. And then they string you on. And before you know, you got a $10,000 thing and you're all kind of hot, um, wired different way. You get kind of jaded. I don't know if that's a slang we use anymore, right? <laughs> jaded yeah, when, okay. um, when you see those kind of stuff. So Ricky, you mentioned it, but Jeremy, how much, how, how can you, how can you, what do you have to do with that vetting process? What does that vetting process look like? And how do you come to a, um, to solidify the person that really knows what they're doing? You've been listening to the Success Journey Show. You can check us out on our social media on YouTube, Instagram, and Facebook. Also on our website, thesuccessjourneyshow.com. Enjoy the rest of the show. Well, all right. Well, I know that in the procurement world, <laughs> excuse me, or like in, um, like think about a contractor, right? If you're going to go out and, 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 and hire somebody to do, you know, a particular, you know, paint job or build out your deck or whatever, right? You want to get a couple of quotes, right? You want to meet a few people. Correct. Right? You want to get their opinions so you can compare notes and you can compare and contrast. So when Ricky is saying about research, that's research, right? Some people are just lazy, right? And so if you're a customer that's lazy and you just want to just say, okay, cool, what, what's the cost? All right, two, and you're going to go by the price, then you might be in trouble. But if you're mm-hmm. if you're serious about accomplishing your goal and really and you're really passionate about your ideas, um, th- then go and interview with a few people. Now, sometimes that may mean that you have to pay somebody for their time, right? You know, to, for that consultation. Some people do not charge, some people do charge, depending on what the situation is. But you go through that process to learn and ask questions, and then whatever preliminary research you did, you can come now. You can compare notes. Oh well, I, you know, I I did a little homework, and I think any professional would be impressed or pleased to know that you didn't come in there and start saying some foolishness, but you actually did some reading and you printed out some documents and you brought it with you to the conversation, and you're able to then walk through and ask questions. Well, I saw this, you know, what does this mean, right? And how does you know how does this play a role in the cost? Right. Ask yeah. questions so you can get the answers you're looking for. And then now you can make a sound decision. OK, company A charges this much. Company B charges this much. Company C. All right. And maybe you want to take the middle ground. Like, OK, hey, these guys are not the, the most expensive, but these guys are not the cheapest. And, you know, in, in oh, matter of fact, oh, the middle ground guys, they'll work with me, too. They'll, they'll give me, maybe they'll give me a couple of payment plans I can install, you know, or I've I found out how much it is and I'm going to save up. And 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 pay for whatever that thing is, and I think here's the piece that uh, most people don't learn. I, I hope we're jumping around, so hopefully I don't get ahead of ourselves and give away the the bag. Ooh, a slang word. I give away the bag, <laughs> at the, you know, too far up in the conversation. But one important thing that people should realize, and, and Ricky, I mean, you know, as a product creator, you guys can can really appreciate where you're going with with your ideas, is the idea that. You're really protecting your your product or your ideas or you know your invention for the purpose of accomplishing some money goal on the other side. Yeah. Right. Yeah. And so, the money you put into it now is really kind of like an investment that will, over the years, mm-hmm. compound and multiply, and it will give you cash. Eventually, it will start paying you back. Like in any yeah. kind of venture, intellectual property is just like that. Yeah. Right. Yeah. That, that, so so think about whether or not a two hundred dollar investment will yield you. It may yield you some, but it may be a smaller sum. Mm-hmm. A longer mm-hmm. journey. Right. So, exactly. you know, a little higher fee. And sometimes they say you get what you pay for. Correct. Right. Yeah, we yeah. know that. Right. Yeah. So so I think a lot of these variables comes into it. But I think the key takeaway here is do the homework, do some research. Right. Um, you know, search for more than YouTube, right? Actually go to, you know, formal organizations like a government site that may describe something or some some education organization or the library or whatever facility or or, or, or entity that seems sound, right? Um, get that information and then schedule appointments with, with, with profesh- professionals in a particular area about this particular, you know, area you have and then ask them how can, how would they be able to help you to accomplish the goal you're trying. Hey, I wanna, I wanna, you know, I got Coke here, right? I want to uh, make a product that looks and tastes like them, but I don't wanna be them, but I wanna be my own version of what they have. Pepsi. How can you help me to do that? And then and then let the professional who is an expert in their area walk you through that journey. That would mean mm-hmm. um, 
the, the research. They're going to go through a process of research that they, that they know how to do. Once they go through that research process, they will compile a report. And they'll give you mm-hmm. this full report of what's possible. If it's too close to that other com- product that exists now, they will give you alternative pops possibilities. Oh, you can do this, this, and this. Or they'll say, hey, you know what? We don't recommend you doing this. You know, don't try to protect it. Just do your own. So you, yeah. you guys will see that. You'll see some, um, watch the next time you watch TV, look for brands on there with TM. And you're mm-hmm. like, hmm, this is a big global company or a big national company. How come they don't have the R, which means registered? They have TM next to the word. That's because they're letting you know it's their trademark, but they but but it's too close to something else why they haven't registered it, right? Mm-hmm. So 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 they will give you guidance, and that's the kind of people you want to work with. You want to work with individuals who can really take the information that that you're giving them, come go do the work, and come back to you with a report, and then you will make a decision together that yes, we want to move forward. And now they prepare the applications because they've told you what you need to know. There's a clear path to the outcome. And now you can accomplish that goal by saying, yeah, this, these guys really care about what I'm doing. They really understand what I'm what I'm trying to accomplish. And now, now yeah. we, can, we can get started. Yeah, dude, I love it. And, yeah, they are. Um, one thing you, you're saying in that, and I don't want people to miss out on this. It's like investment, right? Investment, investment. Like a lot of these things, you can't move forward without that investment in funds and time, mainly, mainly funds, right? Um, there's going to be some capital that you need to get this thing going. And how you, we're not going to go about, that's a whole different conversation on how to secure capital, right? Whether it's your own capital, whether you're doing friends and family, angel investment, um, loan, you know, business loan, like whatever, whatever it is, well, we can talk about that in another whole thing, but yeah, just know that. Yeah. yeah, it's venture capital. It's investment, 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 investment. And we, we've come to multiple points in the venture where it's like, mm, man, we're going to have to put some, we got to put some more out, right? You know, more money has to be spent on, on this, but you're not looking at it in that, in that, moment you're looking at it like jeremy said what is this going to do for us marketing. a year from now say, say it rick marketing oh yeah marketing was a big thing for us like i didn't want to change the conversation but marketing was a big thing for us because we're like man you know we're already spending x amount on marketing and we thought that was cool and then we talked to actual marketing people and they're like dude we're gonna start at at least double what you what you're paying like that, <laughs> what you're doing is just like peanuts and we're like oh man we thought we were doing something with this and they're like nah dude you got to, you got to, you got to level up here if you really want to do it but if you do level up this is what's gonna happen yeah. and we're like you know what we got to spend it in order to to invest not spend it we have to invest it in Correct. the company in order to see those dividends on there. So, yeah, no, I, I like that. Yeah. Love yeah. It, love uh, no, 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 I want to ask Jeremy, you, you know, uh, this is, this is, I don't want to do the typical cliche thing in lieu of Black History Month coming along. This is great. You have three brothers on the, um, on the screen talking about uh, a question or a question a topic that you don't hear too often in our, so I want to ask you, you have your office there. How many, how many, how many minorities, how many black people are walking into your office to talk about this creating, inventing patent, especially when it comes to, I I don't, I don't want to say intellectual property. Like you said, it could be anything, but when it comes to the tech space and stuff like that, um, you know what? Well, here's what I will say, which might be um, surprising, but ba- it depends on what the industry is, right? So, uh, you know, I won't say unfortunately, but, but based on the way you skewed your question, um, <laughs> <laughs> most of the people who are coming that are people of color um, are going to be people who are in creative spaces, right? Music, fashion, you know, beauty product creation, you know, 
Um, so without seeing, you know, seeing as much in tech or in, in equipment creation, I do have a brother that's a, that was a single father with two, two children, um, two babies, and he invented a st collapsible stroller and he got a patent for it before even bringing it to market um, mm. because of his, his challenge, you know, kind of like, man, there's gotta be a better way, kind of a sub yep. solution. Um, but most of the, most of the people of color are coming from, Oh man, I got my song or yo, I got this idea and I got my book or I got my, I got my film, you know what I'm saying? I want to, I want to get it protected or, you know, they're sketching the, the, the you know, drawings or, or fashion design, they're creating something and they want to try to figure out how can they protect it. I don't think that the, 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 the issue, the, the point of issue for my office or for me is more about how many people of color, but it's more about the perception of the people of color. Because mm. what happens is when they come to us, most of the challenges that we have is that is their correlation to value and the dollars. Mm -hmm. That's where we run into um, um, perspective challenges, right? Because when we, we start talking about investment, and you know, Ricky kind of laid into it about the about investment, but but those kind of conversations we have. I had a conversation with a gentleman um, that when I met him. Uh, had a product, a particular brand that's so similar to a, a global music company brand, a global product that you know Disney owns, et cetera, et cetera. And he was he he had his version of it, and he wanted to get a, a trademark registered for it. <clears throat> so my team did their best, you know. So they paid our fee, which is higher than than many, but not as high as others. Um, you know, so we're like that middle ground um, price point for for trademark or for intellectual property services, which is lower than the level that we have. Because a lot of, like, harmless plug, our attorneys that, that run our intellectual property office here are advisors to the USPTO. So they really, they're, they're helping to mold policy, right? They're, they're helping to get the fees reduced so that the public can have more access to protecting their ideas. That's the kind of people that are that are running our IP or in our office. And so this individual, to speed up the story, um, didn't really understand you know what he was trying to ask for right he's trying to ask for the world with only a slice of cake money right you want a whole pie but you want to get a slice of cake and so we find we said we showed him that he couldn't do what he wanted to do with with his with his, his ip which is what i told ricky earlier look we did the research this is a no but here's the workaround you can do a copyright right and then you can still operate with a copyright and do it in the same way right now, many of us don't know what we don't know. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And so because of that, he went after us, dealt with some other group that told him, no, nah, you, you could do it. And they and he paid for the same copyright. He end up, ended up with a copyright. He paid the same, the same or twice as much, right, fee that we paid for the original mark that he complained about and end up with the same copyright that we were offering him just because he, he was judging that we didn't give him the thing he was looking for. Yeah, and mm -hmm. that sometimes is a challenge that we have. Or when we tell the, when we tell people that look like us the price for the service, they'll say things like, "Well, why you gotta be so expensive? Why you gotta charge me so much? Can't you give me a break?" And you be like, "What do you drive?" Oh, okay, you drive. Well, you know, New York City you don't let me drive, but you get the idea. Wow, I'm just curious. Those are some nice shoes, or that's a nice watch. I wonder mm -hmm. how much it costs. When you went to the store to buy that very fancy watch. Or that very nice <laughs> car that you drive, or whatever the suit, or whatever the situation is, the Gucci, you know, I don't like to throw brands out there, but you get the idea, right? Did you try to rat, haggle with them, or did you say, man, this is this is a luxury product, or this is a high end product, and you know, in order for me to operate on a certain level, I want to wear this product, and therefore I will pay the price that this product has for me that they charge. But when you come to people that look like you that's trying to assist you, we run into those challenges where they, where they, where people complain about the price of the service. What I've come to find out is our fees um, tend to be half of what the bigger people who are close to as good as we are, price point, price points are. Mm -hmm. Hey, let me Talk tell you about. something. Yeah. Ricky and I have ran into this situation numerous of times because we have a development company. Not only do we um, make, we're in the baseball space, but we also develop apps. We also do people website. We all also digitize people's platform. 
and we've had people come to us. And when we, when we gave them the consultation, which we do for free, we do the consultation. They're like, this is exactly what I need. Oh my goodness. This will will make my life better. My business. They give you the whole thing. They want to hug you and kiss you right away. Right. You mentioned the price and it's like, they're looking at you and you're thinking like, brother, the only reason why we're able to do this stuff is because we didn't want to pay the highest price for it. And when we started to do produce these products and we found out that we can, people were like asking us to produce the products for them. We said, okay, we're not going to go to the highest price point because we understand who we're trying to market to is those small business that's trying to get themselves to that level to make themselves look presentable, to look, to look more professional. So we're we're cutting that price in half. We're not going to the lowest, but we're going yeah, to that. Yeah. We're cutting that price in half, and then they will come back to us after we had one. Uh, they paid top dollar for, and didn't even it didn't even like you said they didn't get the finished product. All the person did was give them the item and say, "Well, you got to finish it to bring it to the the finish line." And yeah. all because I think it is, is because just like you said, when our own come to us, they're like, I'll tell you, other people, when they come to us and they find our price point, they say right away. <laughs> yeah. yeah. You, know, I, you know, I think it's, it's important that, 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 you know, you mentioned, you know, Black History Month and, you know, it's like, um, I'm Jamaican. So, so when I came to America, um, I didn't come with the diaspora, the African diaspora. Uh, mindset, right? And really, this this type of talk is only coming to coming out of my mouth today as a mature person. You know, in my forties, when I was younger, I wasn't even talking like this, right? But what I realized is <clears throat> that in America, um, this happens here more than per se to, to Jamaica per se, not because of of race and culture, but more of economics, right? But um, I believe that here in America, not enough of the not enough of the black cultural groups, right, or people of color, because that could spread over into other, you know, demographics of Latino and Asian and what have you, but not enough of those people of color, or they call them brown people, right? I like to, I don't want to be pro- appropriate. Not yeah, enough yeah, of the yeah. brown we people. We want you to be too. Yeah. So not, <laughs> enough of the, not enough of the brown people have really learned learned the art of community. So mm-hmm. if, 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 if you realize that these, there are some phenomenal people of color who have studied and mastered their craft and who are passionate at their area of skill. And so more, if more people would realize how it works is you buy from me and I buy from you. And if, if I realize that your business needs, needs this, this service that, you know, I need to buy from you because, you know, you're providing the service and I want you to grow, man, I want to buy, I need to buy two. Not mm. just, not, not only am I going to just buy one, let me buy two. Matter of fact, I'm going to get my boy, Ricky, and my boy Marlon, you got to buy from these guys as well, right? Correct. And the vice Correct. versa. And what I think that when when we start to when we start to turn our mind, forget about the other folks, right? <laughs> this was this was the greatest takeaway from that um during COVID that situation with all the riots and stuff was that it's not a it's not against the other people. It's just pro for us. And no, I think that yeah. if more people start to look at themselves like that, and and every day you get up and you say, hey, you know, what way in what way can I tangibly buy for us right now i i have yet to i don't know i went to morocco last year but i have yet to literally hang out in the motherland in different places um i did go to morocco in passing in the airport but i look forward to to going there but what i've learned from some people who are from there who came from um you know different parts of the motherland who come here who are lawyers and professionals and so forth one of the key things that they say is in the village they buy from each other now watch this. I'm gonna share because I come from upstate New York, where in Rockland County there's a particular demographic that's there, and I've learned that they the the guy who makes bread, right, the guy who makes milk, they buy from each other. Yeah, mm-hmm. they don't yeah. go and buy milk from the the dairy producers of 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 upstate New York. They buy from their own producers right there, and so that allows their economics to cycle, and allows trust and growth if we have more of 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 us buying from us <clears throat> there'll be more um resources within the community and you'll have less of these kind of conversations that we have to have now 
talking about what a perception of a person of color is. You know, and I hope, no. I hope I don't get in trouble talking like this, but I think it's no, 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 no. You you can't. This is our show, and we've been pushing this message. We we, we don't. And I saw Rick. Um, I'm gonna jump to you because Rick. Uh, sometimes I hog Rick. I, I ain't gonna tell them no lie. But um, so probably he's, he's excited. The- he's excited this time of the day. I let yeah, him just yeah. go. Rick is probably going to kick off the show. He's going to do like Joe Buttons and tell me to take a break. Yeah, I already started writing out my own, my own series. <laughs> yeah, I'm going to start my own show. It's called The yeah, One yeah. Person in the Suggestion. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah but the, the, no, this is an important conversation because, like you said, it's not against anyone else. Well, a lot of times when somebody say they're like, nobody is upset if if in San in San Francisco that there's a big Asian community that only their their economics is set. You have little Italy, you have you have all these different communities that surround the United States of America that they actually make themselves better citizens, so to speak, by protect by building up their community because we know with when you talk about um, economics, and you talk about um, uh, uh, um, poverty. <clears throat> if poverty is somewhere, you're going to have more crimes. You're going to have more this. So imagine if we build up our community, we'll have less crimes. We'll have less other things. So it's not. <clears throat> it's not. It's not saying that we are against any other race. We're just saying we want to build up ours to make sure that we are viable in this thing called the American dream. And yeah, Ricky, I'll turn yeah. it over to you. Yeah. And, and also, too, I want to bring another perspective to this on the side of setting prices. I think it wasn't until you really start understanding the different formulas it takes to set for price setting. <laughs> you know, it, it when you get that understanding, then you realize, like, well, OK, they're not out to get me. It's just a formula. It is it is what it is. Right. You know, when you have your product in, you know. If Marlon and I, we, we, when we were in Tennessee um, on the top of the year, you know, we, some people approached us and things of that nature, trying to work out some different deals. And they were saying prices to us. And they were like, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, yeah, you, you'll do this, 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 and this. Okay, yeah, that makes sense. And I'm just like, and this is, and this is really before we start really dissecting and making sure our numbers were right. But they were able, so we went back and we was like, all right, that very night and was like, all right, let's make sure we do this math, right? To make sure we're price setting, doing all these different things, we can have all these different deals. And it's just straight math, right? And, and you apply the formula to your product, to your consulting company, to your whatever it is. And it's either, you know, you're apl- applying this method, you're applying this formula because of this scenario, because of that, and you get to your final price. And that's it. Now, maybe you may find a deal here or two for people because you're like, all right, well, I, I can I can lose a little bit here or whatever. I want to help this person out. Maybe I can do a little bit of deal here. But in order to be successful as a business, if you want me to be successful, I have to sell it at this price or <laughs> else it won't be a business anymore. <laughs> Absolutely. You know? Absolutely. But people don't understand that aspect of it. And I think it's just that awareness. And I will say this too, before I turn it back over to you, sometimes it's just not the right time for you to buy. I'm I'm from that purchaser side, right? Sometimes if you don't have the money, sometimes it is, is just not the right time. Um, there's been Ricky, break that down. Uh, you, you, that's, 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 yeah, you're, you're glossing over it. Yeah. Please sometimes, elaborate. Yes. Yeah, Sometimes, you know, we've had conversations with people that in our journey that have been interested in being involved and doing things like that. And, you know, you see the conversation going one way and people are very protective in either their money or whatever it is. And they're trying to negotiate things of that nature. And then, you know, that elephant in the room is just like, man, maybe this is not just the right. This is not the right time for you. Right. Maybe it's not the right time for you to be in this endeavor. Maybe it's not the right time for you to invest. Maybe it's not the right time for you to push forward with your product. You know, maybe it's just not the right time. And you got to be real with yourself 
to understand when that elephant's sitting right there and just announce that. Because once you recognize that, that's when other avenues will start opening up for you so that you can make it, uh, put yourself in a better position. So you can make it the right time. So you can find different strategic ways of whatever financing or, or, or find the right consultant firm or whatever it may be, right? But unless you acknowledge that, you'll be stuck haggling. And then like you say, you do, you go pay, guy went and paid extra and got less product, you know, less value for his, his money. And he's turning around and, and tell you the story. And you're like, bro, I was here the whole time, but yeah, you- this, yes, you're absolutely right, Rick, about sometimes not the right time. And then there's, then there's the perspective of this individuals like ourselves. I heard you say, um, Marlon say a few minutes ago, one of you guys said it when, when you said, oh, well, you know, we set the price a certain way because we know people are trying. And so a lot of us tend to do that for our community or, you know, or our demographic that we're going after because we understand where they are. And sometimes even though you have reduced the price to where you're losing, but you want them to win because you believe in what they're doing. They believe in their dreams. You believe in their ideas. You've cut your, your price because, listen, the guy that the guy that can always win is the guy that knows their value and they could just do it for free. Mm-hmm. Right. This, this, yeah. and, you know, and I mean, I, I've gotten in trouble just doing that, trying to help somebody and put myself in, in an adverse position because, you, you know, you didn't take what it was worth or what have you. And then now they have a problem with you because of their their in, in miseducation um, or in education because they didn't get educated at all. And they just have a perception that they're that they're moving along with. But um, so the other piece is is, is is cultural integrity. Right. And so cultural integrity for me is where an individual that may be in a particular cultural group or demographic that I believe I want to support, but has a dream, um, but may not have all the means or capacity to do the thing they're trying to do. But but we do. And if we, we, we said, look, I realize that you you can't do this, and that, but you have a good idea and it may not be the right time for you. But I believe that it's the right time for your idea. Mm. I'm going to do wanna, these wanna things go. for you. So that mm-hmm. so that you can win, because if you do, if you follow these three steps, if you just you don't do anything, but if you follow these three steps, I yeah. guarantee you it's gonna hit on the other side. But you gotta follow through. Yeah. And then, so then you try to you, you go ahead and you, and you make the effort to assist them, and then their integrity is such that they can't follow through. Now, I'm gonna cover their side, because sometimes people have been hurt so much, and they hold on to the pain of yesterday that they can't mm. see clear enough for tomorrow what's happening to them today. Mm. And so yeah. as a cultural group, what we have to do is just make it a make it a, a permanent decision that you are not going to hold on to. Whatever happened yesterday is just that. It's in the past. You know, someone robbed you, hustled you, whatever your perspective is, you deserved it. Mm-hmm. Let it go, <laughs> right? And then and then make a decision that every, every day going forward in, a, in trying to chase and accomplish your dream that, that the universe or God or whatever you believe in is sending p- people to you and solutions to you to assist you in accomplishing the goal. And you should just move forward with a force of yes. Because when you do that, man, the world will open up onto you. And so yeah, sometimes yeah. you may not have to have that money. Yeah. Because somebody can believe in your dream and, and sow into you. And then uh, you got to have the integrity, though, to then yeah. repay. Or pay it forward, refer back right. five and ten, you know, etc. So that's yeah. what I would say about about that. You touched on a subject. I know we we're gonna wrap it up here soon. I I know Rick, we 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 get up early in the morning. And we do, and now now people's nine fifty nine Eastern that fifty eight fifty three Eastern Standard Time, right? PM. You touch on such a important portion of how we're gonna get to that goal or to the to the finish line as working with each other mm-hmm, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. a lot of times you find out you find out that a, a record company will will give you an advance because they believe yeah, that this particular artist is going to make x amount of dollars and mm-hmm. if i give him a million today that million today is going to be 30 million Whenever, right? I, I don't know if you heard 50 Cent talk about a story that he had when he said what Master P did to him. 
he said he was on tour master p when he just started like he wasn't he was 50 cent but he wasn't the big 50 cent yet he didn't get the million dollar deal from from um from shady aftermath or whatever dre and them and he was on tour with uh master p and master p said yo listen the tour is gonna be cut short because whatever happened but we're gonna continue it later here's all the money up front and we'll you just give me, give me those two shows later. He said the next year when he blew up and he was 50 cent, get Richard Dyche 50 cent, he had already gotten that money and had to perform for Master P at the price point that he gave him that money up front. The stock rose. Right? <laughs> A lot of times I'm saying all this because we do not believe in equity or investing in someone. We mm-hmm. had some, we have guys in our, that, that, that have rocked with us that we told them, listen, your price, because you're, you're, you're expert, we can't pay for that right now. But if you see the trajectory of where we're growing, would you be willing to invest in us? And later on, you will receive the dividends. We're going to give you X amount in the company, or we're going to make a division just for you. And that person couldn't see past their nose yep. because all they can see is the dollar amount today and don't understand. And now we're doing, we're doing, we're, we're, we're doing. Now we have monthly payments to now someone we have else. Monthly payment to someone else. <laughs> if that, that person had invested in us in the beginning, oh, they would have been receiving those monthly payments now. We do not understand investing in someone and not only dollars will make it. Invest for the equity and know that the potential that the person has in terms of one year, two year, three years down the, down the line and invest yourself in that. Of course, making the good business deals, we know, put whatever on paper, A, we're going to get equity when we get whatever, whatever the situation is. So when you get to that line where the person is profitable, They'll say, okay, here's your cut. And you made a very, very, very key point in that. And um, we just got to understand that, I think. Yeah. It's important. I think if everybody, you know, in, in the wrapping up perspective, if everyone looks for ways that they, that as they're trying to accomplish their goals, if everybody looks for ways that they can um, support somebody else in their, in their circle or in their community, um, with what they're accomplished, what they're doing too, then all of a sudden it, it, it they'll find that the road becomes a little easier, or that like you said down the line that that person can bring something to the table. Um, it's important that we compare apples to apples too, though, because yep. sometimes maybe that that company or that person didn't ha- really have the means or the capacity. I mean, they couldn't afford to do that. True. Yeah. Um, yeah. 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 Yep. Not. No. 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 We're gonna be fair. But look, but look at what happened with Kanye West and his um photographer. His photographer had to fly himself some different places just to be beside Kanye to do a film. It wasn't until how many years later that he got thirty million from Netflix because he had that film material. So, so it, 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 we have to compare apples to apples. But sometimes you got to take a gamble, man. And we take gambles That's- on on the wrong things a lot. And, and, like you said, somebody will take an investment and, and, and buy a Gucci belt for four hundred dollars, yeah. knowing that that belt's yeah. not going to last more than two years, not even two years. But if I ask them, look, look at death. Sorry, I'm going to go there. Look at death. Somebody's willing to pay ten thousand dollars for somebody's funeral. Oh, my mother died. I'm willing to pay ten thousand dollars for. A if she had called me, and said, "I have an idea. Can I get ten thousand dollars from you?" I'd have said no. But when she's dead, I'm willing to invest in her burial $10,000. That's backwards. Yeah. Yeah. In <laughs> fact, more, more than that, they, they, you know, they pay $15,000, $20,000 for funerals. I know. I know, yeah, I know right? Yeah, yeah. $10,000. $20,000. But about. if that person called you when they had an idea and said, let me hold $20,000 $20, or let me borrow or whatever deal structure you want to do, you'd have said no. But when that person died, you want them to have the nicest horse and carriage, nicest casket, uh, uh, Maritha Franklin singing at their uh, at the funeral. You want to spend all that lustrous money on that. But when the person's alive, you don't want to say, "Hey, let me invest in you," uh, um, so we can make something out of it. 
You know, well, hey, so, I, yeah. I, I want to do that. I want to. I want to find folks that are talented, that are gifted, um, that are passionate about what they're doing, and ways that ways that that we can you know support them and where they're going. Um, you know, being fair, being fair, but you know, any ways that that we can help each other to accomplish their goals, man. That's that's what it's about. Um, you know, we're we're in the beginning of 2023, and for for, for everybody that that decides that they want to um, accomplish, hit some big numbers. That they that on their way, um, they, that they can do their do their share to help somebody else who also want to hit some big numbers or big dreams, um, and if they can find ways to to help them in some some way, maybe they don't have it in their pocket, but they know somebody that can, or they can refer refer someone, or they can give them ideas, or their expertise is just as much as valuable as as money. These are ways that we can help each other to accomplish our dreams, and then our community will be better. Yes, yeah. sir. Yes, sir. Uh, Jeremy said it, man. You said so many valuable things tonight, and I'm going to wrap it up on that same part, talking about community. Um, when you're able to do something, sometimes you get to that point where you can just do it for free, and you know that that's going to push someone to the next level. That's when that contribution is just that's when we reach to that point of just really building and fostering that community environment. And I'm not saying free, everything has to be free and all that kind of stuff. That's not what I'm saying. But what I'm saying is that sometimes, you know, even as yourself that are looking for people to invest in you, because some people here in this is like, man, how come no one's investing in me? I need to find that community people invest in me. No, what we're saying is what are you investing in? Who are you invested in right now? Who are you gathering around yourself? Uh, who are you investing? Doesn't only mean time. I mean, money it can be time. Like, are you are you putting your time into something? Like, you know, <clears throat> for anyone out there that's looking for an area to invest their time to make a contribute uh, uh, a big uh, contribution, there's nonprofit organization. There's volunteer opportunity. You can go to a local church. I'm quite sure they can get you busy pretty quick. You know, there, there's ways for you to contribute to your local community. So if you're that person, you heard all this and said, oh, man, what about me? I can't find my tribe and my community, my village. They invest in me. I got that's why I got to find. No, what you need to do is start getting yourself in a position where you are giving. And I'm not saying giving monetarily, I'm giving in a way to where you can help build the people that are around you. It, I would not be where I am today. Marlon would not be where he is today. Jeremy would not be where he is today if it was just on our own backs. Like, I, I cannot say, Jeremy started off saying, hey, Rick, man, you guys got the product out. Like, listen, you know how many hands touch that to get it to where it is like it wasn't something that you know me and tom sat down and just drew up and then voila it showed up like so many hands had to help and contribute in so many different ways to get that one product out there and without one of without any of those hands or even lack of one of those hands we wouldn't be where we are today so trust me guys like we want to build this community the community is is here even in the success journey show, this is community right where we are right now, man. If you're in this community and you hear this podcast and you have a service that you can offer the people that are in this, in this tribe and on this journey, and you've heard people in different journeys, man, just, just reach out. You know, we'll love to be able to curate all those, share those with people that are listening uh, and have just a spot where people can come in and say, Hey, I need help with this. Do you have someone that can help me? Right. Did that sound um, familiar, Rick, when we first started? Yeah. And when we first started, that was a whole that was a whole game plan from day one. So um, yeah, guys, that's where we are. And but listen, man, we, we, we can keep going on all night, and we probably will be talking a little bit longer after we hang up on this. But uh, <laughs> well, we want to thank you guys so much for tuning in today uh, on the Success Journey Show. It's always a blessing to see you, Jeremy, man, and just talk with you and rap with you. Want to thank you for your time and sharing your thoughts and your wisdom with our, our travelers uh, from all around the world. And to all of our Success Journey Show listeners, we will see you guys next week at the same time, the same place on a Success Journey Show. Everyone have a good one. Peace. One love. 
You've been listening to the Success Journey Show, where your dreams, drive, determination, and diligence are the foundation to success. For more information, check out thesuccessjourneyshow.com. The Journey Squad is here helping you to your destination.